We're two hitchhikers. We met while hiking Mount Baldy with mutual friends, wasted no time, got engaged on a frozen alpine lake, got hitched, and have been adventuring together since. We're embarking on a new adventure of living big in a tiny home. Let's see how this goes. Adventure awaits. <laughs> <laughs> well, this week we have a wall to build, so let's get to it. Well, it's snowing, but check this out. We can still get work done. This as a template and this is gonna be your template as to where you're gonna nail so you're gonna nail this right here doot, doot. <laughs> yeah, I plan that. Totally. have thought that the first thing to have a permanent home in this casita, besides the wood stove, would be the broom.
like to address some questions and confusion that um, still seems to be going on because of the way in which we generate or obtain power here on the property. We are technically off grid. Now we do have a power line that goes to the other end of the property, but that is over a quarter mile away from where we have built our casita. And the reason why we did not build over there is because, well, what attracted us to this place to begin with was the view. And unfortunately, where the power line actually ends on the property, there really isn't much of, you, much of a view of the mountain. So here we are. So our plan is to be fully solar. And if you have been following along with previous episodes, like when we first started developing the property, you know that we already have the solar array panels set up. However, we completed that just before winter started and we had to stop the trenching um, of the, the for the conduit line that would run the power from the solar array to the battery shed here near the casita. So right now we were still on the tiny solar system um, that we had initially set up for emergency use only. So keep in mind, this is not a typical setup for a household. This is for emergency use only. And we are very conservative in how much we're actually using the power and how much we're utilizing the system itself. So how exactly is it set up? Well, follow along. That's my favorite bird sound here. So in the morning, we turn this this way to face the rising sun um, in the west. And then as the day progresses, we slowly turn it heading that way. And these are just those uh, flexible RV panels that Ruben mounted on top of these pallet boards. And it works great. So here we have two 12 volt, 200 amp batteries. We have two Proline 5,000 watt DC to AC inverters. The solar panels outside run the power into here, this little tiny hole, and into our system. So what we do is let it charge all day long, the inverter is off, and we'll turn the inverter on at night when we need the power. As long as we make sure everything gets turned off, we're not consuming more than we need. Now on a day when we have sunshine all day long, we can charge these batteries up really, really strong. We can get to 12.4, 12.6 volts. Now on cloudy days, we got a little bit of sunshine today. We started off at 11.6 and the sunshine this morning got us up to, right now it's reading 11.9. We had 12.0 earlier, but the clouds are coming in, so we're not getting as much power. Now this is winter, so we do have very cloudy days and the sun will not peak out for a few days. So what do we do in that situation? Well, we have a generator outside. We try to not rely on that because, well, it costs fuel to run it and it's really, really loud. So we don't do it unless we have to. Now the thing is, we could probably survive in here A-OK -okay without charging anything up because we can run everything to the other side of the property to charge up our phones and all of that. However, it is very important that we make sure that these batteries don't lose charge completely because if they do, we might lose them entirely. Being that we're not running any large appliances like a refrigerator, a TV, a heater, AC unit, anything like that, we can get by very well with this system. At night, we do turn the lights on and we will turn the fan on to circulate the heat from the uh, little mini wood stove we have, but we still try to be very conservative. So we actually rely on solar lighting to light this up dimly in the evening. peaked out from behind the clouds and we're at 12.0 now. So how do we take care of the refrigerator situation? Well, fortunately it is cold enough here to where all we need is an ice chest outside and it keeps everything just fine. For our items that we need to freeze, we have the freezer on the other side of the property and so far we're doing just great. And we have been asked why we don't just run an extension cord from the casita to the power supply. 
Well, it's a quarter mile away. That's a lot of extension line. That number one would be very costly. And number two, that would be a major fire hazard, especially in this area. And we definitely don't wanna be those new neighbors. Oh, one other thing. We've also been asked, well, why don't you just run another power line closer to the casita? Well, we did look into that and that is really expensive. Like down payment on a home expensive. So yeah, that's not happening anytime soon. So even though today is a windy, windy day, we got snow yesterday, we got a little sunshine this morning, we're expected to get rain this afternoon, winter is coming to a close and spring is about to spring, we're waiting for it. And once that happens, the ground won't be as um, frozen and we'll be able to start trenching again. So we're looking forward to being able to fully hook ourselves up to the large solar array. But for now, this works just fine for us. Well, we have the wall built for the restroom. The last thing we have to do structurally is to install the barn door. We're working hard to finish up the interior of the casita. Check back next week to what will be hopefully the completion of the floor. As always, we are so thankful for you to take the time to watch these episodes. It means a lot to us to be able to share our adventure in this tiny home build with you. 